Hello, and welcome to St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. It's always good to hear Judy Stebner at the organ. Thank you so much for your time and your talents. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you also to our videographer, Dennis Murphy, and our film editor, uh, who is uh, Anne Falenz, who spends hours doing the film editing as well. And special thanks to you for joining us for our virtual service this week. If you're interested in coming to a live service on Sundays, please join in and uh, go to our website at standrewsworship.org, standrewsworship.org, and the, you'll find a link to the service. The seats are uh, limited, so you might want to do it as soon as you can think about it. Also on that website, there are some links for other activities and uh, to give you an idea of the life of our church. Uh, for example, the list is a little extensive, so I apologize. Bucks County Opportunity Council is uh, helping those who are qualifying for those to prepare taxes. Uh, that is, uh, information can be found at the Bucks County Opportunity Council website, or I think there's a link on our church website as well. The American Red Cross is going to be having a drive at our church on Friday, March 26th, and that will be held from 2 o'clock to 7 o'clock at night. Appointments must also be uh, done over the website and you can go directly to Red Cross or you can find the link on ours as well. The Zoom Bible studies have been going strong and we still have uh, a seat for you. Uh, the uh, Book of Acts is one of them and we have our Lenten studies as well. And a gentle reminder for those, please uh, keep your tithes and offerings coming in. Uh, the, uh, we appreciate that so that we can sustain the building, maintain the building, and also uh, help out. The uh, food cupboard, cupboard items also are in need of being replenished, and uh, this helps Lehman United Methodist Church's pantry. Now, this is the fourth Sunday of Lent. This is this, this week. And uh, this means that it's Palm Sunday in two weeks, and that's at the end of the month. The uh, Palm Sunday tr services will be um, at 9.30 and 11 o'clock. The Traditional services, uh, after the service, you will be able to drive by and pick up your palms if you are not able to come to the services, but during the services you'll get your palms, and the pickup would be noon to 12.30 p.m. And Easter Sunday is April the 4th in three weeks. So please order your flowers by Palm Sunday we have uh, Easter will be uh, both traditional services in the sanctuary. So keep that in mind. Please join me in the call to worship. 
Once you lived in darkness. Now the light of God has shone upon us. Find what is pleasing to God and follow God's ways. The acts of darkness are left behind as we journey to God's light. Thanks be to God who gives us the light. Open our eyes and our hearts to receive your light of salvation. Amen. Our first hymn is a gospel song written in 1932. Precious Lord, take my hand. It would be so nice for you to join us in the sanctuary so that we could pass the peace to you locally, but no matter what, we pass the peace of Christ to you. Good morning. As we prepare for a time of prayer, we certainly want to remember all of those people that we have been faithfully keeping in our prayers over the weeks and that have been people that have been relying on us for our prayers, counting on our prayers, that we lift them up for the needs in their lives, whether it be healing um, or wholeness, um, financial help, uh, job hunting, whatever it is, putting up with the strain and stress of the um, COVID virus, the loneliness of being quarantined. And as I say those things, I know people are coming to your minds. Uh, you're seeing them and uh, hoping to see them, uh, possibly in the near future with signs of things getting better and uh, the vaccines having an effect, and also the continued um, uh, rules uh, that are followed with wearing of masks and social distancing, uh, so that this thing doesn't creep back up on us and create another spike of, um, of effects uh, upon, upon our population, upon our families and our friends. And so we remember those people. We remember 
uh, the people who are in uh, roles of leadership in our nation, uh, in our churches, in our communities, the first responders, uh, their role in um, caring for us, looking after us, the nurses and the doctors in the hospitals, and their role of taking care of us and providing for us and, and uh, making sure that we're as safe as we could possibly be. And so we add all those things together and we bring them before God who has already seen them, already knows them, knows them by name, knows them by the situations that they find themselves in. And he has already begun to continue uh, and answer our prayers. Um, and as we are praying for all of these other people and all of these other situations, we too are being bombarded by the prayers of others. And we are thankful, O oh God, for the ministry of prayer, the responsibility and the blessing of prayer in our lives. There's a prayer before we go to the Lord's Prayer, there's a prayer by Ignatius of Loyola, who was a priest in the 16th century. And um, I'm going to say more about him in the message. But to lead us into the Lord's Prayer, I want to share one of his prayers, where he says, Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and to not heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for any reward, except that of knowing that we do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. when we don't know let this be our prayer when we lose our way lead us to a place guide us with your grace where we'll be safe. I pray we'll find your life. I pray we'll find your life. And hold it in our hearts. And hold it in our hearts. Stars go out each night. When the stars go out each night. Remind us where you are, let this be our prayer, let this be our prayer, when shadows fill our day. Yes. 
Let us join together in an affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Our responsive reading is taken from the book of Psalm 107, verses 1 through 9. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the, Let the redeemed, redeemed of the Lord tell, tell their story. Those, those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. foe. Those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distresses. He He led led them by a straight way to a city where they they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. And now let's open our hearts and our minds as we listen to what Pastor John has for us today. Last July, an organization known as the Pew, P-E-W, Research Center released findings on a study that they had done. And the headline of the study read like this, about a fifth of United States adults moved, moved, due to COVID-19, or those adults knew of someone else who had so. Many of the moves seem to have been by young adults who are normally, usually mobile at any time. Some of the moves were people trying to get away from areas with high risk infection. And other moves were caused by the pandemic indirectly. For example, a student might have moved home from college and from the dorm because the college dorm was closed to prevent virus spread. Or a restaurant worker moved because the job went away when eateries were forced to shut down. Some moves among other adults were because they decided that last summer was just the right time to change locations. And although the virus has skewed the numbers, many people are still moving for the usual reasons. People generally move for life stage reasons, for health and things like that, or because of things happening internally in their lives. Some of the moves have had little or nothing to do with the virus at all. I talked to you about this moving aspect this moving thing, because in a little over two months, Ange and I will be like the Jeffersons, packing up, loading up, and moving on up. Not to the east side, though, but up to the mountains, where our retirement home is. I'll be retiring, and we will be on our way. So let's hear what God's word says to us today about moving, about the moves in our lives that we have made and that we should make. From Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Paul writes, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, 
and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is even now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us lived among them at one time. We all had the same address, is what he's saying. Going our own ways, doing our own things, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, and following its desires and thoughts. And like the rest, everyone else, we were by nature deserving of the wrath of God. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace we have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds kind of like a move to a new location, doesn't it? In order that in the coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ. For it is by grace we have been saved through faith. And this is nothing from ourselves, not from anything we have done, not by obeying the law and all of its forms, but it is the free gift of God, not by our works so that we cannot boast about it as if it were our works, for we are God's work. We are the handiwork of God created in Christ Jesus for a purpose to do good works which God prepared from long ago for us to do. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The major theme in this reading from Ephesians is about God's grace. But there are also a couple of statements about moving. That quote or that verse that said, even when we were dead through our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ. He raised us up with Christ and seated us with Christ in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. On first reading or hearing those words, we may think, well, that, those words refer to that move eventually we're all going to make when we move from earthly life to eternal life. But reading it over a couple of times and giving it some more thought, we see that the death and the life that is being spoken of and spoken about is about something called conversion experience. Our conversion experience is that moment in our lives where we finally accepted Christ as our personal Savior. And when we declared Christ as our Lord and we surrendered to him, we moved. We moved. We gave up our old place, our old way, and we moved out of our old selves and our old nature. And we were raised up with Christ and seated with him. This move is from an earthly perspective of life to having a heavenly inspired perspective of life from the old life to the new life Paul wasn't speaking about the life after death experience he ends this passage with these words for we are what he God has made us created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God had already prepared for us to be our new way of life our new way of living as we journey on the way to eternal life the life we live until we move on up Paul is conveying the idea of seeing our lives from God's perspective and thereby being motivated in our daily living by that perspective. 
Now remember this man, Ignatius of Loyola? He was the 16th century priest who founded the Jesuit order. He developed a process of spiritual discernment for Christians who wanted to learn what God intended for them. Christians who wanted to learn what God intended for them. You know, it's sad that there are Christians, even today, who don't want to learn what God intends for them. Oh yes, they've accepted what God's grace and Christ's sacrifice provides for them, but they've rejected the call to completely surrender and wholeheartedly follow in Christ's footsteps. And I think all Christians would want to learn what God has planned for them. Don't you? Here is Loyola's important principle for the discernment process. Quote, the love which moves me and makes me choose something has to descend from above, from the love of God. Let me say that again. The love which moves me and makes me choose, makes me decide, has to descend from above, from the love of God. To seek God's will and be moved by God's love is what this principle is speaking of. God's love must truly be desired, sincerely wanted, in order for his perspective to become our perspective. The writer of 1 John speaks of this motivation using different words. He says, God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. We love because he first loved us. Do you abide in God? Then you abide in the love of God and the things of God. God is seen in you because he abides in you. He dwells within you. You love others. Now come back to this idea of moving. To get from where we are in our physical lives, our spiritual lives, to get from there to the place God wants us to be living our lives, to the way he wants us to live, doesn't come easy or naturally to most of us. We have to make a decision. We have to choose. We have to move to the place where the choices that we do make in our everyday activities and in our responses and relationship to others is all founded on what we learn God wants of us. And to get there, it takes a conscious effort on our part. Just like the effort it takes to move our household to a new place. Trying to look at life from a heaven-inspired perspective, in other words, moving our viewpoint and then acting accordingly, doesn't get easier, even as we make it a regular practice. As we go through our earthly lives, our households gradually collect more and more of life behind us as we move along. Don't we know that if we've ever had to pack to move? that we've been dragging stuff around with us forever and we don't even know what's in that box. We never even opened up that box and, and we get more and more stuff as time goes on. Our lives gradually drag more things as well. We drag joys and pleasures, sorrows and disappointments, doubts and worries. And the voice of God that we heard so clearly at first when he called us seemed to have spoken to us so plainly and we could hear it and understand what he was telling us to do. Sometimes, somewhere along the way, on the path, his voice seems to have become harder to hear or even silent. But that doesn't mean that we've failed God or that God has failed us. It means that we are learning to walk by faith. 
We are learning to walk with faith. One of the odd things about moving in 2020 is that if you had done so in the hope of lessening your exposure to COVID-19, the move that you made may have been an exercise in futility. The word pandemic refers to how widespread the risk of exposure is. And you can't completely run away from a pandemic. Likewise, our conversion experience or our commitment to follow Jesus moves us to be raised up with him and be seated with him. And that relocation, that move does not ensure that we'll always clearly hear the word of God when we've got so much building up in us and going on around us and we're not always feeling that close to God. But it's the love and the grace of God that are gifts and blessings that he has already given to us. And our faith needs to reassure us. That's where we need to move in faith with that reassurance that God has given us his grace and his blessings. And those blessings compel us to seek the desire to do his will and to do the good things that we can do. The move Paul describes as being seated with Christ in heavenly places enables us to better please God in the here and now and do the good works that become our way of life. There's only one way for every person. That is to accept the free gifts of the grace of God in an act of self-surrender and humble faith. May all of us be willing to leave our old way of life and live his way in our new way. Amen. Receive the benediction. Now to the one who by the power at work within our lives enable us to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen.